All right, now that's enough. That's uh, enough. I've oh, said enough. Nice, yes, I have. Begun. No, we haven't. We're through. What? Uh, um, what would you like for your? What were you like like in high school? You know, I saw all those. Um, were you like any of the kids in your family? I and mean, I saw all those in-depth bulletins and all those kinds of things. Um, what were you like in high school? Well, I was kind of a daredevil. I did a lot of things I probably shouldn't have. That my kid, I would think, I would hate to think my kids would do. But I always enjoyed life, and I was a socializer. Joined everything that came along. Had a lot of fun, a lot of friends, and had a good time growing up. I really did. Thanks to mom and dad, they kind of let me go on my own. Uh, what was your mom like? Well, when you're looking, she was, she was really pretty strict growing up. But my dad wasn't. I could do anything. My dad, I was kind of my dad's favorite and my mother's favorite with Jean. So I always dealt with my dad more than I did my mom. But it ended up. He was pretty mischievous, wasn't he? Yes, he had a little devil in him. Uh, I think I got that from him, really. I can remember when I, uh, they were out of town one time and I took the car out and I didn't know how to put it in reverse, so I went through, next door we had a vacant lot, and I just drove through the vacant lot right onto Road 31 <laughs> and went all over town. I did this for time after time again when they were out in the evening, they never knew. Then I finally had a boyfriend taught me how to drive. But I didn't know how to put it in reverse, so when we went to the North Pole and I picked up my friends, I always had to park in the back row <laughs> so I could get right out. <laughs> and I couldn't stop it. Didn't know how to start it, really, so I, when we came to stop by, I'd just turn the key off and then start up again. <laughs> I did things like that when I was in high school, which I, it, uh, probably one you haven't heard before. Yeah, that's but, good that sounds like Brian. Yeah, uh, yeah, he might get it naturally. I, I Dad was a bit of a devil, too, although he worked all through high school. He worked at Kroger's, and he worked at the uh, Apollo Theater with Johnny Glenn and, um, um, oh, Goofus, what was his name? Um, anyway, three of them were ushers, so we could always go to the Apollo Theater for free. We used to, they'd sneak us in all the time. Got to be where they showed, um, Apollo's no longer there, but they showed double horror fe features. But we always went down because we could get in free downtown. That's another good story. Now, stop. Be, you know, this whole thing will be in club, which is now still going on, I guess. But there were about six of us that were playing strip poker one day at our house, and we ordered, we called it, ordered blessed nudes, because we were as we were playing strip poker, and we would never tell anybody the name. I mean, where the, what the name really was? It was just O B N. And I understand today it's still going on and they still have a Christmas dance. We had a charter, Sue Geringer was the, wrote up the charter for us, and it's still in existence, I guess. Very popular with the Shortridge kids. At. Originally it was St. Agnes girls. Cut it. <laughs> they called it Club OBN? OBN, and nobody, we would never tell them what the name was. Yes. Order the Blessed Nudes. <laughs> and we got it from playing strip poker <laughs> in our house. And it's still going on. It's quite a great social club. I don't know what they call it. They still call it OBM, but I don't know what they, words they put in there for. Right. Tell me, what was the, uh, what was the toughest pregnancy that you went through? And it probably was with Peggy. Uh, uh, that won't be a question, so if you could start by saying the toughest pregnancy I ever went through was. You know what I mean? You won't have somebody on camera posing the question to you. Oh. So say, my toughest pregnancy was. Okay, I think my toughest pregnancy was with Peggy. Not only did I have varicose veins and my water, when I walked, I had so much water in my legs that it squished as I walked across the floor. <laughs> and you could feel the water squishing. I had to wear uh, Dad's slippers and I didn't go out of the house for a long time. <laughs> The last couple of weeks, anyway. I didn't. I think that was the worst one, really. What was it like giving birth to twins? Uh, no different than the rest, really. It, um, it was just more of a surprise, really. And I was more awake with the twins than I was with the others. My first one, Marge Gasnell went in the hospital with me, with the first two. And, no, Mary Liner went in with me the first time. 
she was a nurse and she kept me so doped up that I didn't even realize I was going through um, birth. Then Marge Gasnow went in and she kept me pretty doped up too. So the first couple ones were easier. They got harder as they got went along because I didn't have a friend there to keep me doped up. <laughs> really. Good story. Um, hmm. Some other questions as I went through. The, uh, oh, tell me what it was like when when you got married. You guys were you down in Florida with Dad before you got married and you came up here? No, you go no, he came back from overseas and then we went down to Florida for our honeymoon. Oh, so you were he, he was we were married and went down to Florida and he was on um they had found spots on his lungs. He was going through pilot training so they had to wait till the um X rays came back to be sure that it was scars that had been on his lungs, I guess, for a long, long time. And so then he went through pilot training, but we had a what they call an R and R ten days down in Florida. Beautiful hotel, great place for honeymoon, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, did he? So you got married when he got back, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh. From overseas. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. Um, what else did I ask you? That's enough, Kevin. No, this, no, it's probably stricter on the older kids than I was on the younger kids, and mainly for sanity reasons. I mean, and our house was always a very quiet house. We've had friends come in and could not believe that there were that many children in there and that nobody raised their voices. Or very seldom did they raise their voices, sometimes among each other. But for the most part, the house was a quiet house. And um, the older ones certainly helped the younger ones in growing up and, and helping around the house and everything. But for the most part, you know you all were always in bed by eight. I didn't allow you to stay up after eight. In fact, Mike went to high school and found found that I came home and talked about all these radio shows. In those days, it was radio that were on that he had never even heard about, and he felt he was missing something else. So then we got to we let him stay up till nine on Saturday night. Just the older ones, most not the little ones. Well, was they, how many kids did you have in the family when you got your first TV? Oh, that was a long time ago. That was, um, oh, it was when we moved on college from 54th Street to 46th, 45th Street. And I know um, Pat was born there. We didn't have TV then. So it had to be when, between Pat and Larry were born, we got a TV. We used to, when we lived next door to the Mulligans and the other half the devil, the kids, they got one of the first TVs in the neighborhood and you all used to go over, oh, the older ones used to go over and watch Captain Kangaroo and Jackie Gleason in, in the afternoon. Those were the two favorite programs, but you always went over there. We didn't have one. Um, can I just ask you something else? Uh, when was the first time you went to Palisades? Oh, I went to Palisades with my mom and dad when I was a youngster. Went through until we were about well, Jean and I, my sister and I joined the Betas, and then they went to Wallace C for their, a week. And I don't know, I guess that would be high school. So we stopped going as a family to Palisades. But then, after we got married, and we had Mike and Kathy, and I think Maureen was the baby at the time, that Nana and Grandpa ran the cottage, and we went, Maureen's cottage, in fact, in the woods, and we went up with them. And, well, I did, we did go on our honeymoon to the lodge. And that's where Dad first knew Palisades. But Nano and Grandpa rented a place, the Moran's, and we went up and stayed for a week with them, with the kids. Tell me about the three um, kids. what made you um, buy the cottage in Palisades. You'd say, you know, we used to rent for so many years, and, and how, did you, how did you pick that cottage? How did you buy that cottage? Well, John O'Connor called Jack, called Dad, and said, um, told him about Packard's place. They're the lot, or the cottage and dad came home to me one day and said how would you like to run a grocery store and I looked at him and I didn't know what he's talking about and so then we went to Chicago and came back from Chicago and looked at it and that was in the year of 19 oh shoot I can't remember now he'd know but um, it was an, a way for us all to be together for a summer and the older ones could make money for their school the next year 
So we decided to do it, and Dad and I would stock it and clean it up, get it open, and then the older kids would run it. I think Mike was the first one. Kathy, well, in fact, uh, Palisade Patter said this year, the, 20 years ago, Kathy was postmistress up there. So that's been 20, has to be 22, 23 years ago. But that's how we decided to go up there. Now this is this is boring, Kevin. You don't no, want to hear. Be, it would be really good when you see it all edited together. Well, I know, but and all that kind of stuff. Um, not me talking though. Yeah, sure. Would you hmm. have you ever thought about what you would would have done or what you would be if you didn't have fourteen kids? Um, not really. I don't know what I would have done. I started as a dietitian, went to dietetic school, and I might have. In fact, I had a chance to go to South America from dietetic school, but my mother and dad wouldn't let me go. But anyway, I thought of that, but I think probably what I'd really love to have done is be a florist, flower arranger. I think I, I've got an act for that. I think I could do that. But no, I never really thought about it. The kids were my life. I mean, that's... That was it. I was too busy doing anything else. I mean, having 14 kids must have been running, um, like running a small office, 14 employees. <laughs> Not really. Sure. They weren't employees. No. Yeah, but I mean, you did no. medical, you did mm. the budgeting and the bills. What was it like doing, handling all the, you know, all the bills and all the food and all that? Well, that's kind of hard to explain too. So many people ask me that. Um, for a long time, Dad's theory was, if you don't have the cash, you don't buy anything. So we went on a very, very tight budget. And I guess I'm still kind of used to that. He said, if you don't have cash, we never use credit. Then after the kids started growing up, and it hasn't been too long ago that I started getting credit cards. <laughs> and now I have cards at the department stores and can charge and do things like that. But for years, that was our, his theory was, if you can't pay cash, don't buy it. So we went a lot of times without a lot of things. But now I do have a credit card, so. Did you, how many times a week did you go shopping when you had, how, I mean, how many kids did you have in the, in the house at once? How big, how big was the household ever? Well, see, by the time Mary Ann was born, Mike was away at college. And then Kathy went away to college. Uh, for the most part, I think everybody was there at one time. They were all home, really. Okay. Uh, what else? What? What? Um, what was it? What's it like being married to Jack? One. Well, a little bit of heaven, a little bit of hell. <laughs> Not really. No, I fell in love with him the first time I met him, and. Um, I just, in fact, I told my best friend at that time that I was going to marry him. I was only a freshman in high school. Once. And um, he's just always been wonderful. I mean, he gives me a bad time now and then. It puts me down a lot, but uh, I've always loved him and always will. So what else can I say? And if he had put as much money into that house as he put into this house, it would have been perfect, it'd still be there. I love that house. This house I did not like. But he was bound and determined to move us out of the neighborhood, which I could understand because of the things that were happening in the neighborhood, mostly blacks, really. But we looked at, I look, we looked at this house, and he liked it and I didn't. And so Dorothy Osteimer took me around for almost a year, showing me other houses. And every time I'd find one I like, and I'd try to take him there. He always came back to this house. So I went to the lake one summer and I came back and he bought this house. <laughs> and there, that's one of the reasons, well, not one of the reasons, but it's never been like, I like the higher ceilings and the bigger rooms. It's never been a place where we can all get together. You either, you have the downstairs and the upstairs, but it's not a mixing place for a big group to gather. And I miss that about the old house. That's it. 
That's good. Um, tell me about. Uh, I'm used to it now, but I never uh, did like the South. I hope that's not okay. No. <laughs> tell me about Christmases. What it was like to buy the gifts for all those kids. Oh, Christmas was always, it's always been a favorite time of mine. But it used to be when the, oh, I think we went down to the f first four, we put up the Christmas tree Christmas night after they all went to bed and trimmed the tree and then they saw it for the first time on Christmas morning. And mother and dad and, and we had neighbors, they, their neighbors, the Bookenbergers used to come over and we always used to have a party Christmas Eve and trim the cr tree after the kids got to bed. After dinner, can I have her give you a call? Yeah. What's your number, hon? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 899. 2nd grade on through the 8th and then uh, moved on to Cathedral at 14th in Pennsylvania 
Or at Meridian, excuse me. When did you meet Mom? And while I was at Cathedral, I met uh, Mom's brother, Harry. We were classmates. And uh, through him, I met uh, Mom. But I first met Mom uh, riding uh, uh, saddle horses out on uh, Laurel Drive, which is now uh, Emerson Way and the back end of uh, Cathedral High School. It, it was along, it, Laurel Drive went along where Windridge is today, and that's the first time I met Mom. But uh, that was in 19... 38, I believe, and, uh... When did you go to the service? I went, uh, <clears throat> I was sworn in, uh, July 1942, up at Purdue. And I became an Air Cadet, but they didn't call me to come in until January of 43. And then I went to, uh, was inducted at Columbus, Ohio, and uh, was sent to uh, San Antonio, Texas, and went through the procedures of becoming an air cadet. And I ended up uh, in bombardier school, and I was very disappointed because I wanted to become a pilot. But uh, I had to go before a, a board uh, because of my attitude towards uh, becoming a bombardier, but I, I did go through the uh, schooling and and became a bombardier and a second lieutenant, and was very proud of it, and flew thirty missions, uh, and became a lead bombardier. And when I came back from overseas, and I went started through pilot training. And uh, in pilot training, I finished primary flying uh, a biplanes, that's two wing planes, biplanes, Stearman PT-17 they called it. And I enjoyed it very much. And then I was moved to uh, basic training with the uh, at Moultrie, Georgia, where we, at Spence Field, where we flew uh, AT-6s, which were a pretty good-sized plane. It had a 660-horse engine in it, and it was a big airplane. And <clears throat> while I was there, the war ended, and Mom and I were married at that time, too. And uh, she... Uh, at that time, I was expecting Michael. What do you think after your first, with your first baby, first child? Well, we, uh, I got out of the service and came back here in October, and went, actually, last of September. But uh, I had kind of a promissory job from Al Jones who had a dealership and a distributorship for DeSoto Plymouth, but there were no cars in those days. Nothing was being built, so <clears throat> he recommended that I go into the uh, insurance business with uh, Bowen Mahaffey, or the Mahaffeys, who were friends of his. And I was determined to go back to school, so it just gave me a great opportunity to uh, to go to school at Butler because I had a great insurance school, and uh, at the same time, work in an insurance agency. I worked from uh, eight in the morning to I went to school from eight in the morning to about twelve, twelve noon, and then went to the um, office from. Oh, well, anywhere from one to eight, one to nine. I worked quite a few evenings. 
And after doing that for several years and learning the, the, the business in the classroom and actually practicing practicing it in uh, reality, I think I became reasonably proficient in the insurance business. But then you go on and you learn and you learn and you learn a lot more as you practice what you learn. So I think that's how I got started in the insurance business. And as, of course, Mom and I had children all along and they were coming uh, at a rapid rate of about every two years. So. Did you want to have 14 kids? Not necessarily, but Mom, uh, Mom always said that she wanted a lot of children. When she was in high school, said that, so she got her wish. And uh, I don't think the number was a, was a, ever considered, but she didn't uh, object to any of them. So it made her happy. It made me happy. So. That's how we had 14 children. What's it like to have 14 kids? Pardon me? What's it like to have 14 kids? Difficult. What, I mean, what's, the, yeah, <laughs> sure. what's the hardest part about raising 14 kids? Well, the education is, uh, you know, I mean, the everyday ongoing thing, uh, um, moms, the mothers, and I, I helped a lot, but financially I'd say that uh, education is very difficult. And, yeah, and as you know, everybody had the opportunity to go to college. I don't think they all succeeded, and, but the majority did, and the majority graduated. So for that, I'm kind of proud, but uh, it has to be the diff most difficult thing. And in the parochial schools, they were not inexpensive, you know. I mean, the high schools is the grade schools, the parishes always needed money, so it was not the easiest of things to do, so it, it occupied a good part of our time, a good part of our income. So, uh, raising 18, 14 children was, I, I say that, I look back on it, I don't now consider it was difficult, it was, it was just a, it was something that had to be done. It was a time-consuming thing, and and, and uh, we both had to make a lot of sacrifices to get it done. And so here it is. They've, it's been done, and everybody is healthy, and they've all lived, and that's a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be thankful for. So I think that uh, says it all.